This is Frederick Meekins of the American Worldview Alert. Tries the atheist might to manipulate objective data to fit their hypothesis with some evolutionists going so far as to invoke the law in order to suppress perspectives conflicting with their origins account. The assumptions of atheism fail to square with the facts of nature and with the revelation of nature's God. At one time, earlier in the modern era, it was quite common for the atheist to portray himself as the true friend and ally of science. However, as impartial observational science has probed deeper into the macroscopic realm of cosmic space, as well as the microscopic world of the subatomic particle, this relationship once prided by the atheist, turned out not to be as solid as originally thought. The scientific establishment in the philosophical elites once derided the so-called theistic proofs for the existence of God as the outdated wisdom of a less enlightened era. It turns out, however, that these time-honored arguments may be as relevant as the latest academic journals. The cosmological argument, perhaps the best known, states that all finite realities and structures have a cause. Therefore, ultimately, there must be an uncaused cause, complete in itself, in order to get the proverbial billiard ball rolling. This, the theist, declares to be God. Naturalistic cosmologists steeped in atheism such as Carl Sagan, once tried to dance around the issue by saying that the cosmos is all there was, is, or ever will be. But it seems that the laws of physics don't exactly have a record of contributing to their local PBS station. The laws of thermodynamics declare that, left to themselves, systems degrade to the maximum level of entropy, or in layman's terms, things wear out. Employing this principle, one is forced to conclude that if the universe is an infinitely old closed system, those like Sagan claim it to be, then the universe would have already wound down in eons past. Therefore, the universe, the universe must have had a beginning, and since something finite cannot come from nothing, the hypothesis hypothesis of a divine creator provides the most plausible alternative. It has been noted that the theistic proofs do not necessarily reveal the God of Judeo-Christian adoration, but at best point the seeker in his direction. Likewise, the finding of science point the individual in the direction of a yet more definitive source of knowledge standing in opposition to the claims of atheism. Scripture strikes the decisive blow against those daring to spit cognitively in the face of God. Psalms 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Until the scientist can replicate life on his own from nothing whatsoever, that verse settles the issue of whether the universe sings the praises of an omnipotent creator or testifies to the cruel fact of an arbitrary universe devoid of plan or purpose. Some will no doubt continue to insist upon their own path of stubbornness despite what the very molecules they are breathing might be telling them. Of those failing to be persuaded by the evidence, Psalms 14.1 says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Webster, Webster's defines fool as a person devoid of reason or intelligence. Either the educated person assents to the reality of God, or his so-called education is not worth the value of the parchment the big shot degree is printed upon. If the skeptic still refuses to abandon atheism in light of the objective evidence, one is left with no alternative but to drag out the rotten fruits produced by this faulty system 
in terms of ruined lives and fallen nations. For instead of establishing a set of moral values resting upon a foundation apart from divine revelation as originally postulated by the adherents of early atheistic modernism, one ends up with an ethical system based upon absolutist relativism of postmodernism where almost anything goes except daring to set forth some kind of behavioral standard binding upon all. According to Chuck Colson in Against the Night, Living in the New Dark Ages, in the arena where relativism reigns supreme in opposition to the law of God, there is no legitimate ground in which one can exclude the arguments and proposals of Nazis, serial killers, and pedophiles. From today's headlines, the nation is coming to realize in the most brutal of ways that these ideas do not confine themselves to academic journals or newspaper opinion pages. In the case of school shootings such as Columbine High, this radical antipathy towards God can in fact turn deadly. If the lawlessness of atheism can wreak havoc upon individual lives, just imagine its effects magnified across entire societies. The major dictatorships of the 20th century testify to this blood-soaked historical truth. Founded upon assorted atheistic ideologies, these totalitarian regimes promise secular heavens on earth, but instead drag their nations down to the very borders of hell. Unfettered by external, eternal standards, those holding the reins of power in such societies had nothing to hamper the implementation of their most extreme policy whims, not even the value of innocent human life. For example, Mao Zedong, one of the People's Republic of China, slaughtered five million of his own countrymen in pursuit of his cultural revolution and related kinds of communist nonsense. While the United States has not yet eliminated that many, at least among those fortunate enough to escape the womb alive, the Orwellian day is here when good will be called evil and evil called good. Former Secretary of Education Bill Bennett aptly noted when an appearance on Meet the Press that had the Columbine killers greeted one another with Hail the King of Kings rather than their trademark Heil Hitler, school officials would have intervened since an affirmation of theism, especially of a Christian variety, is the one thing an atheistic educational system cannot tolerate. School officials did not intervene, and the rest is history, with organized unbelief claiming yet a few more in its unrelenting war upon God and humanity. As public rhetoricians are fond of pointing out, mankind stands at a crossroads. The choice, however, goes to a level deeper than the choice between Democrats and Republicans, that Americans must make on election day. The decision to be made transcends the limited purposes of institutionalized politics to embrace fundamental issues of worldview and belief. The nature of this conflict can be discovered in a comparison and contrast between atheism and Christianity. From the fundamental postulate regarding the non-existence of God, Atheism attempts to formulate a comprehensive framework upon which to hang its understanding of mankind and the universe. Without God to account for the cosmos in which they find themselves, atheists argue that the complexity of nature arose through a process of gradual evolution governed by the rules of chance. This process of evolution, to the atheist, serves as the dynamic against which man strives to find and determine his role upon the earth. As such, everything is thus in a state of flux 
and nothing is fixed as man struggles to figure things out against the backdrop of a cold and purposeless void. Not even fundamental issues such as individual rights, personal ethics, or social institutions can afford to remain fixed and stagnant according to the atheist. And if innocent human lives are ruined or destroyed, that may seem regrettable at this moment along the long evolutionary chain, but mankind will ultimately get things worked out and the piles of corpses littering history's ditches will not be so nauseous upon further enlightenment. Of these ideas, Proverbs 14.12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Any history book objective enough to attest to the horrors of the 20th century testifies to this startling truth. Standing in contrast to the lonely pointlessness of atheism is Judeo-Christian theism, recognizing God as the fundamental proposition of the universe. Like atheism, the Judeo-Christian tradition builds its system around its conceptual foundation as well. But since its basis is drastically different from that of atheism, the conclusions drawn by Christianity are considerably different. Christianity holds that, since the universe was created from nothing through the word of God, all creation is dependent upon him at all times. Colossians 1.17 says, By him all things consist. Since man is God's creation, it is therefore God's right to determine the standards by which man shall conduct his own affairs. And since God loves his creation, it follows that his standards are for the benefit of his children. These standards are communicated to mankind in a number of ways. One such way is through individual conscience. Romans 2.14 says, For when Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature things contained in the law, these having not the law are, are a law unto themselves. While God has written the law across the heart of man, man has suppressed this truth through sin. God has overcome this development, by making himself known in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ, and through the direct propositional revelation of his word in the Holy Bible, of which 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It is within this framework of law and grace that the balance between the individual and society is found as this system and the objective standards established by it protect the individual since it recognizes the worth and fallen character of each. That is why Psalms 33.12 said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Atheism remains one of the most serious intellectual challenges faced by the contemporary Christian. Despite its obvious scientific and sociological shortcomings, the powerful adherents of this system, positioned in influential sectors of society, such as government and academia, have enshrined this worldview as the official dogma of civilization nearly as stifling as anything allegedly imposed by the medieval Catholic Church. Yet despite considerable efforts to enforce this system as an orthodoxy that goes so far as to jail students daring to pray around a flagpole, like its sister system in the former Soviet Union, Western atheism is a decaying ideology. It is amid this decay often resulting in social and individual ruin that the Christian is able to proclaim the superiority of the theistic alternative and the God of its adoration. This is Frederick Meekins.